public space is the new backyard. It's the new place where we as people carry out the things we used to do privately, we're now doing publicly. We're meeting friends, we're having dinner, we're playing sports, we're socialising. My view is that public space really is a sanctuary and it's a sanctuary for the people who live and work and come to the place as a destination. Great landscape architecture projects can actually get people out of their apartments and going for walks. It can get them engaging in a social way in their community. I think aesthetics is important. People do look for that, but it's more than that. It's, uh, it's, it's about comfort and it's about feeling secure. When you own something, well, it has meaning and you take care in it. And I think that's the great part about public space. If we can build ownership with the community, then you have engagement and very enjoyable spaces. Backyard Experiment is Street Furniture Australia's biggest research project yet. There is a lot of talk about movable seats, so we wanted to see if they actually work. We play 60 movable seats at Garima Place. Uh, we installed time-lapse cameras uh, to observe what people do with them. The pop-up park was there for eight days. The time-lapse cameras recorded four days before the experiment and eight days during the experiment. So the idea behind the backyard experiment was to see how we could take a public space that has not been successful in the past, that is rather dreary and dull and is not providing a good setting for the surrounding kind of retail environment. And what are some of the simple methods we could use from a design perspective to activate the space? I grew up pretty close to the city in Canberra and Garima Place for the last 30 years that I've been here, it hasn't been a space that the public has really engaged with. It's a space that people have walked through, that the government has tried a whole raft of different initiatives and festivals, events, programs to try and get people to the space but it hasn't had a long lasting impression on the community. Not a lot of people spend a lot, um, much time in Grimmer Place, just because there's not a lot of uh, areas that they can sit down and relax. Grima Place could easily be more family friendly. I think lots of families are really looking for a version of Grima Place that is more family friendly. It could definitely do with more people. I think that um, it's long overdue for a, a facelift, this part of the city. The idea behind Greenwood Place and how we would activate it would be to use minor interventions. Things like flexible seating, colour by using colour on the ground plane, uh, within the trees, with yarn bombing, getting community groups involved and student groups involved to provide a sense of ownership. And the other element would have been the lawn space. Oh, I'm such a fan of movable chairs. So having spent time in Europe and other pl places around the globe, it just changes the way that people engage in space in such a dramatic way. Um, I just think if things aren't bolted down, they tend to disappear. <laughs> Removable, come on. I think there'll be a problem with um, the drunks at night. Personally, I was very, very scared that all the chairs would go missing within days. Everyone we talked to said the chairs would go missing. Uh, so it was quite worrying. The setup was so fun. There were so many people involved. There were passerby stopping to help us paint the pavement. Uh, Shahana, the CEO of Ayla, was um, painting as well. It was a beautiful local vibe volunteers helped. There was quite a buzz. After the first day, after we finished installing everything at Gorima Place, uh, we were pretty keen for something to happen, but uh, nothing really happened right away. I think uh, it takes a little while for someone to break the ice, you know. It takes a while for someone to sort of sit down, you know, and then other people see them sit down. And um, so eventually though, after a few days, more and more people were kind of making it their own. 
and then I've seen the park and it was really nice and colourful so that's why I decided to go here. We all go to ANU so we come to Karima Place all the time to just grab lunch and we were um, walking through but and we would have just gone straight through but because it was so colourful and nice we thought we'd stop and we took some pictures. Yeah, it was really nice, it's a nice surprise because we're used to what it looks like to, and to see it different. We've got blue up lighting in the trees, what that does is creates uh, a few things, volume in the space, so you can suddenly see it's like a cathedral up in the trees, it's, it's amazing that you wouldn't pick that up otherwise. Secondly, the blue light creates uh, contrast, so with the white light that we're also using you get that cool and warm contrast, which is a really interesting thing. It's a really warming kind of place, like you, it feels um, like it's got more of a personality than, than what most parks would. My first thought when I came around the corner was, wow. This is fantastic. It was full of people, people sitting in chairs, people that weren't normally there, um, and, and other people looking on and going, gee, what's this? This is, this is fun, this is exciting, this is a bit random. We were really surprised by the increase of foot traffic overall. Uh, we knew that there would be more dwellers due to the experiment, but we didn't expect the foot traffic to increase by almost 200% over a very short period of time. Uh, the other really interesting find was the increase in demographic diversity. There were more friends, there were more couples, there were more retirees and, and more families. One of the biggest aims of the experiment was to make it, the area more family friendly, turn it from something intimidating to something warm and inviting. It was a much better outcome than we even envisaged and I don't think we ever thought there would be that many people or that many groups of people and that much interaction with the space as there was and it was fantastic to see. The final good news of course is that out of the 60 movable chairs we placed out there none of them went missing. Uh, everyone said that they would all go missing or a lot of it will go missing uh, so we were surprised. It looks like that the community said this is something special and, and they've obviously said well we don't want to damage it, it's good for our space and even those homeless people that were there must have said well we like it better like this. So rather than take a chair home and damage the environment, they said we like it better like this, let's leave things as they are. So that's, that's a type of buy-in, isn't it? I've never seen a ride just for a long time with kids. Never. So I think it's a great idea. One of the great outcomes from the experiment uh, was ACT government started coming out to site and surveying people as well. They created a website um, to gather feedback from the community about the future of Green Place. Obviously the, the experiment was such an incredible success in that it really did activate the place and bring in double the numbers of people. Well, what I like about the project is that you've used design to change an environment and the outcomes of really affected behaviours. So design can do all sorts of things. It can enrich uh, people's lives in certain ways, but there is absolutely positive proof now that by adding this cocktail that you've created, you've changed behaviours. So we know for a fact that in certain circumstances, when you add these levels of vibrance, colour, and uh, let's say free range seating, uh, you change the way people think about a space. Now that's, that's new knowledge. Uh, that's new knowledge we can use to affect design outcomes in the future.